Hi, everyone. Welcome to Moves Moments. My name is Pete Evenson, co-founder of Moves and your host today. Moves is an all-in-one solution for your transportation business. Whether you're just starting out or you've been in the industry for some time, Moves provides the easiest software to delight your customers, drive more sales, and automate your day-to-day. -day. So today, I'm super excited. I've got not one, but two very special guests, Marlon and Isabel from Kingdom Car Service out, out of Orlando, Florida. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, I think we just have to dive in. I mean, talk to me a little bit about your backgrounds and how you got started with Kingdom Car Service. Wow. Well, thank you so much for having us. Yes. Um, well, it's been a journey. So yes. I started uh, actually by myself in 2021. Uh, I came from a background of being in the airline industry for almost 10 years, worked for two major airlines and three different stations. And, um, you know, there was just time for transition that year. And I decided, you know, I would do something different. So I was looking into Indeed, looking for different job postings. And I came across an opportunity for a chauffeur position at a local company here. So I dived into it. You know, I took a chance. I took a plunge. And, you know, it worked out really well. Uh, I worked with them for a couple months. Nice. Transition to another company yeah. later on that year. Um that was a little different experience. I had to pay weekly rent for the vehicle. Okay. And I had to kind of go out there and figure it out on my own. I wasn't really getting much work from them. Um, but you know, it was a very good learning experience. You know, and from this there, time were you guys together at this time and you were start okay, so this is before Isabel, you came into the picture. Right. Yeah, so we're, we're, we've been married now for almost 10 years, yeah. right. but Congrats. Isabel was doing her own thing, uh, okay. she had her own career going yeah. on, and, um, you know, I was just getting started. I mean, I had her support, of course, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, so, you know, I did that. Um, for a couple months, I was paying rent for the vehicle, and, uh, you know, she helped me design some business cards. I was handing them out to clients, and every week I was building the business to the point where... Uh, within about eight to nine months, which was the following year around April, is okay. when she decided to join the company and work with me. Yeah, I love it. So, so talk to me a little bit more about that transition. So you're you're renting a vehicle. So you started as a chauffeur, then mm -hmm. you started to rent a vehicle, right? And I think you were yeah. under a specific company still at that yeah. point, yeah. right? Yeah. And then what led you to sort of you know jump ship and start your own company? Um, and how did you get started? Was that just I'm going to buy a vehicle and I think I can go after customers. Like, how did you make that jump? You know what? So I pretty much felt like I was running my own company with that vehicle that I was renting at the time. Sure. You know, so when I looked at how much I was paying weekly for it, the fact that I had to really go out there and get the most of my customers on my own. Um, I said, you know what? After doing it consecutively for, you know, a couple months, not worrying about the payment, putting money in my pocket. I said, man, if I get my own car, this will cost me less, you know, and I could definitely, you know, so I spoke to Isabel about yeah. it. And then we also have a mentor here that we work with really closely yes. and he encouraged us. He said, go for it, you know, yeah. and we bought our first Suburban. Okay. Um, so went went with the Suburban first. Right? Yes. The and, suburban. um, and how did you go and and did you already have customers at this point that you could start working with? Or did you really have to think about just customer acquisition? And how did you think about customer acquisition? Well, so that's a great question. Um, I, I, you know, I always say YouTube University is one of those things that you can really, you know, learn and glean yeah. from. So I had a few customers, local customers um, at the time. And of course, I started thinking about customer acquisition as well, because, you know, in the, the in this climate, you know, we're the third largest convention center. We have Disney, you got right. Port Canaveral. It's highly competitive. So yeah, I was like, totally. there has to be some way for us to acquire our own customers. And of course, you know, we talked about it, we strategized, and um, it has been working out really well. Yeah. yeah. At that point, I, I realized that you had a, uh, a good customer service. Because the clients kept rolling in, um, and I was like, okay, let me design your business cards. And at that point, I still had them full time. And then at that point, you even had moves. Yeah. I said, even at that point, when he decides to go full time, that's yeah. when he then gets. Yeah, it got to the moves. point where week after week, yeah. you know, just having your notes in your phone with different days, different customers. 
it was starting to get a little yeah, yeah. yeah. and I mean yeah. I hadn't even known terms like farm in and farm out and I was already doing those things um yeah. that time okay yeah. so I was like at that point I was like okay I need to organize right. um, you know the business so that's when moves came in to the picture yeah and and I think for the audience I mean obviously you know, I represent moves. I, you know, right. I have some biases, you know, <laughs> you know, and in, in this environment, and I think it's, it's one of those things that it makes me so excited just hearing people using moves and how it's benefited their business and things along those lines. And, and really those are what keeps me really going at the, yeah. at the end of the day, right. Is, is empowering yeah. operators to find success. Um, and we'll we'll dive a little, little bit more into how you utilize moves and how that's been able to benefit you a little bit later. I think, you know, the one thing for you, Isabel, that I want to ask is, um, you know, how, what challenges did you have to, you know, kind of face and overcome in this transportation industry? And, you know, what were some of those challenges and how did you overcome them? Yeah, I will have to say just like Marla mentioned the competition, like how were we going to differentiate ourselves? Right, because his his journey was from starting with a small company that rented a vehicle, and then boom, now we have our own business, and it's saying, okay, well, how do we reach those clients, and how do we present ourselves from um, professionally, right? The execution of it, right? And honestly, doing our research, one thing was getting a website, um, the dispatch software, and I know that we're gonna get into it a little later, but really, that has been our um the decision that we made to go with moves was because of how user friendly it was and we realized that when we had gotten it mm -hmm. we would just get a lot of customer feedback uh -huh. yeah. um and i'm like okay well we really have to implement that because that's really that having that having the platform really became a backbone because sure. especially if he was doing it on his own and then i joined him we needed an automation process to really capture the customers that we were booking those that were finding us online. Um, we are part of three different chambers here in the city of Orlando. So my my career was in corporate management. So I okay. was able okay. to really bring my skills to overcome, okay, yeah. as a small business, what is it that I need to really structure? So if any challenges did present themselves, okay, I got this because we prepared ourselves for it. I think that sometimes small businesses can get into a lot of hurdles because yeah. The preparation process it's not there mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so it's like you know they instead of going after our planning to figure out how we're going to get the customers mm -hmm. they go get the vehicle first yeah. and then it's like, okay now i have this vehicle what do i do sure yeah, yeah. we're going to be caught in that situation yeah. so let's talk about that a little bit so you started with the suburban and how many vehicles do you have today now we'll yeah the and the sprinter. Wow, that's incredible. That's yeah. really, really incredible. And so how did you decide, okay, now is the time that we add in this other vehicle? I think when I talk to operators, especially, you know, smaller operators who are maybe one, two vehicles, and, you know, it's difficult for them to jump into that next, you know, payment, ultimately, of paying for yeah. their vehicle. So, you know, that's, they come to me and say, Pete, when can I make this decision um, you know, the, this is that environment where I talk to other operators and they tell me this is how I made that decision to start buying more vehicles. So walk me through that. Um, when did you make that decision? How did you make that decision to add more vehicles to your fleet? <laughs> That's a great question. So um, I think, you know, a lot of times we, we look at it from different perspectives. But for us, we let the business kind of determine when was the right time to get the vehicle. You know, yeah. so working by myself for about eight months or so, um, I had an opportunity to work with an affiliate company in Miami for about a week. Um, once the first week Isabel joined me, she said, let me go after them and see, you know, if they offer services here in Orlando. And before we could even sign the contract, they were sending us tons of work. Oh, you know, so I was like, all right, you know, I can't, you know, you have, you have, you have ground rules in the industry. Yeah. You, you don't sure. want to farm out other people's work and things of that nature. So, you know, we're looking at it at that point where, okay, it's been a couple months now. I think even in the beginning when I signed up with Moose, 
uh, you guys were doing like these awards that you would send out every month. Yeah, I think one month I had like the most farmed out trips. And I'm yeah. like, I'm a one car owner operator. Dang, I didn't realize I was farming out so yeah. much work. And once you kind of see that pattern, you know, sure. okay, if I'm farming out two, three thousand dollars worth of work every single week, or, or you know, whatever it would look like in terms of cost and whatnot, then yeah, it might make more sense to you know, get a vehicle. For Just add family. that vehicle in your fleet. Ultimately. Yeah. I love that, right? It's here. You have a vehicle, but you can still acquire customers. And that's the beauty of farming in, farming out, yeah. right? Yeah. That it allows you to see if there's a, a demand, a dynamic for that specific vehicle and that right. specific customer type that might be utilizing that vehicle. Right. Then once you see the business grow to your point, then mm -hmm. it maybe gives you that indication of, Hey, I can buy this vehicle now. Yeah. Right. I mean, that kind of leads us to like the last vehicle that we purchased, which was oh, the Sprinter. Sprinter. Okay. So last year, September, we added a Sprinter to our website and to, you know, our dashboard. And we started getting a lot of hits on it. So we found a company that we could trust in Orlando right. and we used them to farm out yeah. pretty much all of our Sprinter work for what? How many months was it? Yeah. About yeah. six to eight months. Okay. Um, once, you know, once we realized, okay, we're forming out a lot of yeah, work, yeah. it's time, it's yeah, time. So we did, sure. and it has been one of our most profitable vehicles, I yeah. believe. Yeah, this that's time. incredible. That's, yeah. that's awesome. So when you think about the customers, like your type of customers, right? Mm -hmm. And you, other operators, they really focus on retail and party bus opera, uh, customers or, you know, folks going to the airport and more corporate or uh, tourists, right? That come into Orlando. So who is your like perfect type of customer that you're really going after today and acquiring? Well, it's really a mix, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I, touch say, on that. yeah I would say um, 50 percent of retail because you have, you have to know what's in your backyard. And our backyard is filled with the theme parks. You know, mm -hmm. um, so we wanna we definitely wanna capitalize on that, and that's what we've done. And then the other 50 percent have it's our corporate accounts. Because we have um, the Space Coast that sits right in our backyard in Brooklyn mm -hmm. Island. Uh, we do a lot of cruise transportation, um, especially, and it's not your market, like Port Canaveral, which is where the, cruise tra where the cruises uh, this em embark from. Um, it's actually ranked number one in Florida, and it's a past Miami for a lot of them. So all those cruise travelers... Um, any, any, yeah, any, they, yeah, they definitely, you know, we, we get a lot of that, especially yeah. over the weekends. Over the weekends you know, we get Disney, yeah. and then, like I mentioned mm -hmm. before, we have the third largest convention center here yeah. in, right. in the U.S. Yeah. So, we yeah. get a lot of people coming for road shows, conferences. Mm -hmm. I mean, almost every hotel that you can think of in the Universal Disney area has a convention center, <laughs> exactly. Exactly, so, yeah. yeah, that's so the beauty really about Orlando, right? There's always something yeah. going on. Right. You know, and because the weather is so nice, people do exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. Um, when, when you think about those customers and how you acquire those customers today, um, you know, when you first started out, it was, hey, I'm, I built my own book of business and I started to utilize that book of business to find more. And sometimes you land contracts with other businesses and hotels. So how are you acquiring customers today? Is it primarily, you know, paid advertising online through Google? Is it still going to hotels and conventions? Is it, you know, what, what sort of efforts are you doing today to generate new business? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll divert <laughs> to my new CEO over here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so that's really where I came in. Um, my background, I grew up born in entrepreneurship. So I just, I know that when you have a gift for it, you grow up in that environment, um, it just, it became safe in nature to, to join him in the business when the time, when the time was right. Um, sure. And I handle all the networking part of, of the business. So okay. we're part of three different chambers. We won awards. Uh, um, one was a, a grant for us being resilient. So there was a hurricane that, that hit Orlando in 2022 last year. Mm -hmm. Our doors remained open. People were calling us like, hey, can you get us to Miami? Can you get us to Fort Lauderdale? Because can you get us to Alabama? Alabama, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
and we were on it. We were on it, and we got the reviews, and so it, it was something that was verified when we got the award. And then the second award that we had won was um, through Spectrum Reach, which there was a commercial that aired for 12 weeks straight um, here in Central Florida. So that really gave us that brand, that brand awareness that mm -hmm. hey, we're here. Uh, we do a lot of uh, sponsoring events, um, so we a lot of marketing dollars for that. And just to, again, just be out in the community so clients can really trust us at the end of the day. Yeah. And then yeah. right now we're sitting um, a little over 255 star reviews. So where the clients validate the experience, sure. but it just doesn't, it just doesn't become something that, hey, we're preaching about. It's easy to talk about it, but what was really the experience like? And because we have those reviews, it validates. You know, really where we are. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they search for you know something in that area. You know, yeah. going to or going to Disney. You know, convention, etc. The validation yeah. is there from the reviews. Obviously, exactly. your website looks great, so it checks a lot of boxes, Thank right? Yes, yeah. and, and find you right, and it's really that validation. I want to I want to go back to something you just said, which was this hurricane that happened, and your company really stepping in and taking folks to where they needed to be. Talk to me about how that all unfolded. And that's an incredible story, just surface level, but I want to get a little bit deeper there. Again. Yeah. You know what? It's a really interesting story yeah. because um, we actually lost power for about three days we did. We did. Um, during the hurricane. We did. Our street was pretty much flooded. Yeah. Uh, so we decided we're not going to use any of the sedans during that time. Yeah. So we parked them up in the garage and we had mm. the, the SUVs out. Um, we set up, you know, like a phone system through Ring Central. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. you know, our customers can call in. We can get routed wherever we are, pretty much. So um, at that time, you know, during the hurricane, the airports were shut down for, mm. for some time. And you had a lot of customers that were like, I, I need to get home. You know, of course, because of my in, my background in the airline industry, my number one priority at that time is safety, you know. Sure. So, you know, I got to make sure my driver is going to be safe traveling. Are they going to run into any crazy winds or anything like that? And, of course, once they call in, the customers call and we had drivers that were willing and available. Mm -hmm. As long as the route was safe, we took them wherever they wanted to go. Yeah. Including yeah. Alabama. Including, Including Alabama. Alabama. We, we had one, yeah. Alabama. Yeah, Miami, Miami, Miami. Yeah. Yeah. Fort Myers, I believe. Fort Myers yeah. One, yeah. So, and all of those you're talking about two, three, four. Alabama is almost six, seven hours away from here. So, yeah. yeah. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the closest thing to you know getting someone to where they need to be safely and soundly, and doing so in a, in a place where it's extremely challenging to do yeah. that in that kind of environment, right? Yeah. And it's just great to see not only the company, but also the drivers, you know, yeah. willing and able to step up and, and do that in these difficult times, which I think is. Yeah. Absolutely I mean, we have, you know, I, I'm really appreciative because we have some great drivers on our team. Yeah. Uh, a few of them have been with us for over a year. Nice. Um, once we started, you know, adding on to the fleet, we, you know, we definitely were able to get some really solid. Yeah. Uh, one of them in particular has a background in uh, trucking. You know, okay. so he's used to doing the long distance yeah. trips. He was the Alabama, the like I, he was the Alabama yeah. guy. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's yeah. great. That's great. Let's touch on drivers for a second because I think this is a hot topic that comes up quite a bit in terms of how to find drivers, how to retain drivers, how to keep drivers happy. At the end of the day, it's one thing to provide a great vehicle, but that doesn't even matter if you don't have a great driver that comes along with it, right? Yeah. So. How do you find drivers today? How do you make drivers happy and satisfied? And that's a challenge with, within itself. So is there anything that you generally do to make your employees happy? That's a great question. A, um, I believe the number one thing really is making sure that you have enough work yes. yeah. to provide for your drivers. Sure. You know, if that check is not looking good, they're not really. They're going to go elsewhere, right? They yeah, have to make money. Really are. Right? Which is why, you know, it kind of goes back to the whole thing about when to get vehicles and things like that. You know, I, I would rather have the, the fleet that we have now than to increase it and not have enough work to provide each driver that's in a vehicle. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was one of our main things, just making sure that we have the right size fleet, the right amount of work 
so that each driver gets, you know, a fair compensation for, you know, every week. So, yep. Yep. um, and then also providing that training too, because one of the things that uh, Isabel used to joke around with before she decided to join me was she thought that maybe I was like doing drugs or something <laughs> because yeah. I would come, yeah. yeah. And what I mean by that is I would come home with cash. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I had one week when I was working by myself prior to, you know, expanding. I don't really drive as much as I used to now, but sure. um, I had so much cash. I made more cash in that week than I would on my full time as a supervisor in the airline industry. Yeah. Yeah. And Isabel's over there like, what What are you doing? You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. How are you, you know, showing up all this cash? Yeah. So it was like, it was amazing. So at that point, you know, we decided, all right what what i did how can our drivers replicate that you know yeah. so we teach that process from the moment that uh a client is in the air to the moment that they drop them off how to treat them you mm. know opening the door you know luggage is last you know just those those things that you know you you might not you don't want to overlook in the customer yep. experience and yep so that we a model that we The experience doesn't really doesn't really impress us, if you would say. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, we don't go with just, well, he has 20 years of chauffeur experience. <laughs> we really look at the just the overall picture. Hey, do you have the customer service? Do you have the heart for it? Do you actually enjoy driving? Because, you know, when they don't come with that experience, but we found out that, you know, our team had, they're the best in the world so i'm a little biased but no they really they really deliver yeah. and it's not like their background has been in chauffeuring so i like to say that to encourage any other business because yeah. sometimes especially in this industry what i found oh well they have 20 years or 10 years of experience but at the end of the day when they need to deliver on the customer service right is it thing right and i and i've even given this analogy to to before in the training with some of our drivers, you know, if you work at Burger King and you're making a Whopper mm -hmm. uh, and you decide that you want to go and work for McDonald's, uh, making that Big Mac is completely different. Mm -hmm. Totally. You know? Yes, it might be the same industry as food, but yeah. the systems and the things that they, the, how they layer the, the meat, the cheese and all the different things that are in there is so different. So we make sure that when the drivers are coming in, they understand like, hey, you might have worked for another company yeah. before. But this is the way that we do and we Love conduct that. business so that we can make sure that our brand is consistent. You know, that mm -hmm. experience is consistent. You know, there's a lot of times even when a driver will pick up a customer from the airport and they're not, they might not be available to drop off that customer back on mm -hmm. a round trip. They get another driver and we still get a five star review and they'll amazing. put both drivers names. In, you know, that's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Because you hear that often and customers are like, I only want to work with Billy or I only want to work with Sally. Right. But if you can think about it where it's like, you know, kingdom car service, I want to work with kingdom car service. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's because they have all of these great drivers in the service and right. It's the whole umbrella of service that I right. think your company comes with, which is truly a differentiator. Right. Yeah. So yeah. really, really cool. So one question that I have, obviously, you know, being with moves is, um, how have you, how did you think about joining Moves and how did you make that decision? And maybe you could just shed some light on how maybe Moves has been able to support your business. Yeah. Great question. So um, for me, you know, I look at it from the, the customer standpoint, you know, when I was making the decision as to which software to use, um, I know, you know, with Rideshare, you have, they have their apps, they have their ways that you can go about booking. And with us, I said, you know what, if a customer is requesting uh, a poll or they're looking for, a, you know, for service, for reservation, how can I make it user-friendly? How can it be, you know, simple, even on the back end for yeah. me to, you know, and, <laughs> and then also, you know, can it also look good? You know, I really want it to look like something yeah. like Windows 98. Or exactly. Yeah. yeah. I was like, so, 
the or the early days of of computer. And like I think obviously we take a lot of pride in that. And mm -hmm. we think about not only the operator experience, which is our customer is the operator, but we think about the customer experience that's the customer of the operator, right? Mm -hmm. We want that customer, the customer of Kingdom Car Service, to have the best buying experience, to have the best transportation experience through technology, right? So we have to think about not only the customer being the operator, but the customer that is the customer of the operator, right? right? And yeah. that's that's one of the things that we really take pride in and, and how we create software today, right? So um, what if you had to have any moves feature, right, that we would launch in the future, what would that be? Uh, can we give two? Can I give one? Yeah, 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 for sure. No, uh, so for one, because we're here, you know, in Orlando, we get a lot of car seats. Okay. A lot of booster seat requests. And then we're very particular, so we always ask whether or not it needs to be front facing or rear facing. So you know, something like that would be great. Where it asks um, that in the the purchase experience through the booking tool right. is what you're referring yeah. to. Yeah. yeah, I love it. You know, so you have the luggage count, you have check bags, carry on, yeah. oversized, yeah. but then also having the option for additional golf bags, car seats, yeah. you know, yeah. and the orientation. I think that would be really awesome. Because okay. a lot of times when the, the requests come in, we yeah. see the passenger count, we see they're going to Disney, automatically we're asking them, do you travel with children? Do you need car seats? And then we're putting it in the trip loads, you know, so. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Really good. Really. What about you, Isabel? Uh, what's another one we spoken about? Like, um, oh, okay. Yeah. So a lot of times. We really talk about it. We do. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. um, upgrades so a lot of times because of the schedule it gets really crazy especially during the weather you have situations where a flight might be delayed and we're looking at the reservation okay this is a sedan reservation um is it sedan only can we upgrade it to an suv and if we do upgrade it to the suv is there a way for us to be able to reflect that on the dashboard okay Really good. So we, you would want to see the customer be able to upgrade on their own or have your team do the upgrade? We would basically do the upgrade based on the dispatch schedule. for them. Got it. Got it. Okay. Really, really good. And what I want to say to the audience that's listening, right, is, you know, when you go on our website, movesapp.com, we say we build for operators, right? And then we take operator feedback and we go and build it. And that's why, you know, I, I have these questions. We ask these questions all the time to operators, right? So do. when we come back, you know, and do a follow-up and whatnot, we're going to go and we're going to see those features launch. And then we're probably going to find out more on like, cause there's always things that we can constantly improve. And like, that's, that's our biggest thing is we know that it's probably never going to be done, but there's always ways to improve. Oh, right. Yeah. So, so um, more on like a personal level, kind of transitioning a little bit, mm -hmm. um, you know, you both working together and, and being in a relationship, both professionally and personally, how is that running a business together? How do you overcome some of those challenges where there might be a difference of opinion and all of that, right? So I don't know who wants to go first there, but, um, you know, I think it's good because you see a lot of other operators who do run businesses with their significant other yeah. right and there's probably operators who are going to be watching this who need to think about running a business with their significant other right so maybe you could just shed some light on what's worked for you well i'll start off with having a mentor yes. has really uh saved our marriage yes. <laughs> allowed us to create the environment that we have now where we can yeah. work together really well um, you know, the first couple months, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was yeah. interesting. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's probably normal, right? It's going to be right. rocky. So how are we going to work together in this? You know, how do we, you know, if, if we have a difference of opinion, how do we solve it? Right. right. What yeah, about I you? Think... Yeah, no, I, that was the first thing that came to mind. Having a mentor, our mentor is amazing. He, um, he, he really guides us on the marriage side because he goes 
it's it's good to have the business, but your marriage will always oh. come first. Mm. So just make sure that 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 um, is solid. Yeah. Is solid. You know, he, he one thing that he has told us is your life is a business, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think that understanding that and, and prioritizing that is the most important thing. Um, I think in terms of working together, the awesome part was because my background was in business, it was almost like I I knew as his wife, like, okay, I'm meant to help him in, in this area because of my experience. Absolutely. And so when I came, when I transitioned into the company, it was like clockwork. I was I was closing on the deals, I was closing on the contracts, um, I was just networking because I knew that it's almost like you, you gotta know you. And I knew myself in terms of like almost like knowing your purpose and when there's certain knacks and gifts and talents that you that you yourself have and you have to know that. And I know that that entrepreneurship, the business side was an area that I would just excel in and help him in, most importantly, as yeah. my husband. And then if I may, you know, one of the things that I realized uh, in this, you know, this journey, because we're basically in our third year now in business, yes. is as a leader, I had to develop, I've had to grow. Yeah. Um, so, you know, one of the things that I had to do was take a step back and really analyze things, um, you know, determine, okay, who's going to be responsible for doing this? Mm-hmm. Who's yeah. going to be responsible for doing that? And one of the things that uh, we came to the realization of recently was that um, our roles were actually reversed, you know, in terms of what we do, what we're really good at, you know, so for me, I was the CEO at the time and Isabel was the chief operating officer, but because of my background in uh, the airline industry, operations is my thing. That's your thing. That's your go-to. That's my go-to. You know, you got 200 flights coming in for the day and you have to be able to recognize, okay, this plane needs X amount of people there. Bags need to go here. Things need to go here. And I was like, okay, we just had a contract recently where we had over 200 guests in four days. And, you know, I didn't have, so I didn't have like a blueprint or any kind of desire for it. I literally sat down with Isabel and said, hey, this is how we're going to run it. It went seamless. You know, and it was amazing opportunity. Yeah. And after that, I said, you know what? We're going to do, we're going to reverse it. Yeah. So uh, recently we just announced to our team that Isabel is now our new CEO and I'm going to be the COO, the chief operating officer. Love it. Yeah. I love it. And and you got to be able to recognize those things, right? Yeah. I think, you, you know, you both recognize your strengths and I'm sure Isabel, you know, there's, how do I come in and, and prove that I can do this, right? Because you came in maybe at a later point and you can provide, you know, suggestions and feedback, but then also at the same time, you you recognize that um, there's a little bit of ego, I'm sure, involved in that, right? And at the same time, you know, recognizing that, hey, I the only way to get better is if I trust the instincts of other people and trust them to do the right thing, right? So it seems like there's really that symbiotic relationship between yes. the both of you. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really cool. Did you yeah. have anything else to add there, Isabel? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say I think overall getting a mentor because the the sweet thing about our mentor is that he's been married for almost thirty over thirty years. over thirty years. Um, the he has over a million dollar in assets. Oh, um, how do you want to cut it? He, he's achieved levels that we haven't achieved. And I say that, and I wanted to insert that um, here because when you get a mentor, you want to follow someone that's been there, that has a solid marriage. You want a solid marriage, okay? Well, you can't just follow anybody or have any mentorship. And I think that because we've seen his life been, be so successful, mm-hmm. you can turn honey. Yeah. Um, our, that's what's really kept us grounded because the thing is uh, and I say this also being wise thankfully they know we, we have a very successful business mm-hmm. I think it's also okay what's next for us and and being able to follow someone that has achieved levels that we haven't achieved before yeah yeah I mean mm-hmm. it will it really helps you and prevents you from having to learn yeah. You know, the hard way while climbing, you know, that mountain of success, yeah. you know, being able to say, okay, 
make sure you do this, you know, yep. like for instance, the vehicles, you know, making sure you have enough work yep. or you acquire more vehicles because now you have this cost and, yep. you know, how are you going to pay for it if you don't have enough work? Yep. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so this individual, your your mentor is, um, is so, sort of been through some of these trials and tribulations and challenges where they can provide guidance on how to approach specific situations is what it sounds okay. like. Yeah. And a lot of it is really just based on principles, really. You know? Okay. Um, for one, one of the biggest principles that I think has really worked for us has just been the power of agreement. Yes, that we have. Yeah. So like we don't if you have to make a decision, we're like, you know what? Um, we're just not on the same page on it. We go to the mentor and we're like, hey, this is what we're thinking. Should we should we do this? Should we not do this? Um and he's like, Okay, well, this will happen if you don't do it. And if, if we go away what you want to do, this will happen. So Okay, what's the end goal at the end of the day? So something that we've implemented is that is that power of agreement because it's like how can two walk together unless they agree? You know, and we want to push the company forward. And you have mentioned you have mentioned something key, um, key and that was ego. And yeah. it's something that can be a very uh to be a yeah, yeah. Okay, for sure. yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I think it's understanding, okay, how do you humble your own opinions and yep. ground it to to hear someone else? And I and he's not only a mentor in our lives. Um his name is Dr. Andre Dalton. Right. He's here in Florida, but he, he's a leader. And yeah. the thing is, if you really want to be led to the next level to the mountain of success, then you have to be able to listen. And one of the things that we've done is being humble you know to say you know what honey i don't agree with this um let's go to him let's see what he says right. and he gives us he he's and every time he and here's the thing though experience you'll see the fruit of it because every time he told us what to do we've been successful oh, and it, is, wow. it hasn't been a, the fruit you know, in the yeah it makes it really easy to say <laughs> yeah. okay i'm gonna do this yeah. because yeah. the track yeah. record is, the track is there. Record. Yeah. one yeah. thing to say something it's another thing to actually like actions speak louder than words, right? And like when you see the actions take place and it actually works, it's like, okay, this person knows what they're talking about. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's great. That's really, really cool. And then okay. there's, there was one thing that I also I had to learn too along the journey, which was, okay, I might think my idea is the greatest thing since sliced bread. And yeah. Isabel has a great idea as well. You know, I've had to take the time to sometimes say, okay, give me some time. Let me think about this because- yeah. You can always try to find a way to even merge the ideas together, you know, take one piece from from her idea, one piece from mine and blend it and see how that can work together. And a lot of times when we when I do take that time, I look back and I'm like, man, that idea might not really be that good. Right, you know, right. and her idea me might be what we really need right now. Yeah. You know, so not being so rash to just jump at something and make a quick decision on it, but really I love it. Uh, yeah. I love it. I love those principles, right? I love sticking to those principles and using those principles to navigate decisions, right? Yeah. Really, really cool. Um, I'm going to leave you with this, right? So the folks that are listening um, and want to know more about your business, whether this is a customer listening, whether it's another operator and a potential affiliate down the road, maybe you could just talk a little bit and kind of end it with, you know, your business, your differentiators, and if anybody's looking to get in contact with you, how should they do that? Awesome. So, um, you know, we we are here in Orlando, Florida, as you as you already know, Kingdom Car Service. Um, one of the things that we have built our business on is being reliable, you know, being dependable. Um, you can never really go and find anything negative about our business anywhere because, you know, we really strive to offer, you know, excellent customer service. Uh, when it comes to our affiliates, you know, we're, you know, we're an open book, you know, if we need to, you know, adjust the time for one of our customers or farm out one of our jobs to make sure that our affiliates are taken care of, we do that. And we work with, I mean, all the local companies here, we work with companies around the world and, uh, you know, we'll be more than happy to assist in any way that we can here you know we're a big community you know yeah and you know although we talk about competition and whatnot 
we still look at all of the other companies here as friends and family. Yeah. So yeah. Really, really cool. That's amazing. Um, well, I can't thank you enough. And so if anybody's going to find you, should they go on? What's just state your website? Um, yeah. So our website. Out for us. Yeah. Our website is Kingdom Car MCO, like the airport, MikeCharlieOscar.com. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, I can't thank you enough. I mean, this is truly one of my inspirations when it comes to what I do is speaking to operators like yourselves, how they got started, where they're at today and, and really where they're going. And I think just the dynamic being, you know, in a relationship, both professionally and personally, and seeing that success is really a remarkable story. And I, and I wish you both all the best. And I can't thank you enough for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. And we'll talk soon. Okay. All right. All right. Take care. Uh -huh.